Right, well, it's nine o'clock in London, it's 10 o'clock in Spain, and it's um, 11 o'clock in Finland, Nikki. Good morning. Uh, good morning. My name is Andy Fairburn from the Nordic Tourism Collective, and welcome to everyone joining us this morning. Thank you for tuning in. And um, if you're watching this on recording, um, welcome and hello. Uh, technology is, is the oil that sort of helps our industry function. It helps it operate better, and the more efficient the technology is and becomes, then the more efficient uh, our industry becomes. So the intention of our webinar today is to take a cross-sector, a rounded and a cross-sector look um, at the technology we work with today and how this has changed, how it's likely to change in the future, and what that means for uh, all the players in our industry today. And one of the most crucial areas of, of, of our industry is distribution. Um, it's an environment that through technology has been transformed over the last decade and is likely to do so in the future. So today, we're delighted to be looking at distribution. <clears throat> so we'd like to welcome, first of all, our guests. And we'll, if everyone could just give a little wave, um, that would be fantastic. So first of all, I'd like to welcome our good friend and adoptive Tech resident uh, Nicole Pagels from um, Gurth, Chief Gurth Officer of Modair uh, in Finland. So, good morning, Nikki. <laughs> I'd like to welcome Alejandro Gomez Losada, who is Vice President Commercial at Hollybob. Good morning. Uh, welcome to John Harrison, Regional Director of Benelux and Nordics at the Hotel Birds, John. And finally, but not least, uh, Anna Igual, our CDO Chief Di Distribution Officer, forgive me, at Roy Boss. Good morning. Hi, good morning, everyone. So um, we'd like to take a look at really, as I sort of outlined in the beginning, the introduction, looking at technology in its broadest sense, maybe looking and taking some deep dives in specific areas, but really sort of looking how it's transformed our industry and what it means for the future. So Nikki, maybe perhaps you want to start with a, a general introduction on the subject, maybe sort of give us some background, give us some context, what we're looking at and where, where are we going with this? Yeah, absolutely. Good morning, everybody. Let's get the technology working here. Right, here we go. Okay, so... Um, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much, Andy. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nikki Pagels. Um, I am the Chief Growth Officer, like Andy mentioned, for a company called Mordad. We're a travel tech house based in Helsinki, um, specialised in hotel management solutions, as well as a bit of a pioneer in sustainable travel technology. I am also very much an ambassador for NTC and help Andy and Paul with this Tech Matters programme. Um, and my job today is really to give you a short introduction into perhaps one of the most complex areas of our industry today. So this is very much a crash course into distribution technology, by no means something that's in depth. Um, I'll leave that to the other speakers today. So to get started, let's try by uh, defining what is distribution technology. Now, this is something that has slightly different nuances um, to its definition, depending on who you're talking to within the travel industry. But essentially, distribution technology does the same thing throughout. So distribution technology is essentially a network of software solutions that facilitate travel purchases through different channels online. Uh, to give you a bit of context into where dis distribution technology within our industry started, I've taken out a few pillars uh, within distribution travel technology history, if we say it that way. Um, it all started in the post-war era back in 1947. Um, where the hotel segment decided that it was a good idea to start automating reservations, to move away from books and to start logging reservations automatically within systems that had just emerged on the market. So the first one that was um, launched was a um, software called Hotel Type that was set up by Westin. Um, and a few years later, Sheraton came up with Reservatron. And essentially what they did is they started to log customers automatically into a system rather than writing them down into a book. 
Now, American Airlines then took this technology um, into the airline industry. They added pricing, they added inventory, and they added ticketing on top of it. And lo and behold, the GDS system was born. Now, the GDS system is perhaps considered to be the oldest type of distribution technology within our industry, and one that still exists today. Fast forward a couple of decades, and we all remember the internet and when it was born in 1983. The internet itself was perhaps the biggest changer for distribution technology within travel, as it gave rise to a vast new industry, particularly within online travel agencies, online travel uh, booking portals, and essentially changed the way that customers um, search, research, and also book their travel today. So looking at where we are today, obviously we're in 2020. Um, last year's data um, suggests that globally 70% of all travel bookings were made online. So where we've gone from in 1947 to 2022, we have essentially changed the way that travel um, is booked, the way that travel is searched, the way that travel is researched, all through various different elements of distribution technology. So what does distribution technology encompass? Now, I've tried to make this as simple as possible. It doesn't by all means touch on every single part of the distribution chain, but hopefully gives you an idea into the vastness of this particular industry. So if we look at the very core, the little yellow blob in the middle, um, we start with something called an operating system or an inventory management system, depending on which part of the travel and tourism industry we're talking about. So within hotels, this is essentially the property management system or the hotel management system. It could also be an activity or attraction management system, or it could be a sim simple inventory management system with a pricing tool attached to it as well. Attached to those operating systems, we have a variety of different revenue and pricing management tools in today's day and age. Some of these might be integrated into those operating systems and some of them attach themselves as separate units. So that would be the pink circle around the yellow one. You then have a variety of different content distribution tools. Again, these might be integrated into other systems or they might be tools that are added on top to help essentially send information about products through the distribution chain. Now this might be text, it might be imaging, and along with that obviously comes the need to map this text or image into the system that you're sending it to. So there too is a whole industry of different mapping tools that are attached to this. Um, looking at the red circle, um, you have the central reservation system. Now, particularly for larger organizations, these are essential pieces of software that essentially aggregate pricing data, inventory data that might come from that PMS or operating system. They then take a look at the different distribution channels and aggregate all of the different reservations coming from the various different channels onto that same platform. So they act as an operational aggregator of price, inventory and reservations. Looking at the wider ring, so we're going into the blue and greens now, you have the green ring around the central reservation system, which is essentially the aggregation platforms and marketplaces. Um, whereby you can send your product with prices and inventory to various different channels um, around the world. So here you have a marketplace of channel managers, you have meta budget management tools, which can be separate companies, or they can also be integrated into other software. You have a whole marketplace of travel product marketplaces, which in traditional terms would have been called the wholesaler, in today's day and age, very much operate more like a marketplace. And I'll let some of the speakers today maybe go into that more. Um, you have the traditional GDS in there still, very much relevant for our industry. You have a host of RFP tools and also the internet itself. Going into the blues, you then have the sales tools and the booking portal. So you have your OTAs, your OTOs, um, DMCs, travel apps. You've got social media itself. Um, you've got direct booking engines that operate with businesses themselves, as well as a number of different consumer based marketplaces as well. Um, you have then the uh, darker blue ring, which really looks at the marketing piece. So there you have social media as well as marketing tools like personalization tools, conversion tools and messaging platforms that help essentially to sell those products to the end consumer. 
And then finally, you have the black ring, which looks really at optimization and benchmarking, as well as also review handling. So a number of different tools that might be integrated into other so often stand alone um, as marketplace magnifying glasses, um, really trying to aggregate data from different marketplaces and benchmarking them against each other, as well as also looking at reviews that customers leave for various different products. So essentially that is um, the distribution technology web. Um, by no means does it look at every angle, but hopefully it gives you a good view into the types of conversations that we're gonna have today. Um, the speakers that we have today touch on multiple different areas within the circle. Um, so hopefully you'll find um, this an interesting session. And that's it from me, thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Um, well, I mean, we could, we've only got an hour. Um, we could spend a week talking about this. There's so much, so much to discuss. And I, I, I don't really know where to start, to be honest. I think um, the aggregating side of, of products and then the, then the aggregating of, of, the, of, of demand and really how you mesh that together, I think is fascinating. And certainly um, um, it's, beyond complicated in terms of my understanding of, of what the tools are. I have a sort of limited understanding of the different 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 people that I've worked with previously and currently in the moment. Um, but how it all meshes together in this incredibly complicated spider's web is, is incredibly complicated. Um, let's, and let's have another presentation and then we, maybe we can come back and, and talk about some of those issues. Uh, so I'd like to uh, ask Alejandro, who, who is Vice President of Commercial at Hollybot, um, who he's one of those little Dots. I'm not quite sure what color you are, Alejandra, uh, whether you're dark blue or green, but um, if you could uh, perhaps make, tell us a little bit about Holly Bob, what you do, how you fit into this incredible spider's web and, and how, how your business, how your business has brought something different into the industry. Completely. Thank you very much, Andrew. And, and thank you everyone for being today uh, on the webinar. I think that uh, myself, I'm Alejandro Gomez. I'm VP commercial at Holly Bob. Hollybuff is a travel technology company that was born in 2019 and is on the path, hopefully, to becoming the e-commerce engine for experiences. So we we started aggregating experiences content, things to do, but then we started thinking differently into how to solve a very identifiable consumer problem and help other travel and no travel brands generate money out of like sustainable um, experiences or things to do business. So. That is that is about Hollywood, and I and I think going into uh, what um, Nikki shared, and I hope you're appreciate you see my screen. Yep. Um, so I think it's interesting because tech is really important uh, when we talk about the space, right? Uh, I think basically, if we go into does tech really matter? The answer is undoubtedly yes. And if you ask Google, which is the source of a lot of my questions, um, Google will tell you that there's about 42 million results for distribution of travel and tourism industry. They widely bar that you will find a million things. It was flabbergasting yesterday when I was preparing for this that still a lot of legacy uh, results. Uh, the most common words, because I actually did a, a word search using AI, was travel agent, wholesaler, legacy, GDS, and uh, channel manager, um, going through some of these results. So again, this is only validation that tech is important and the distribution is an integral part of travel. And I think that uh, Nikki kind of picked it up herself, like we were doing this historical review uh, I'm an ex Sheraton Starwood uh, employee, uh, and I didn't get to use Preservatron, uh, but I, I still consider myself quite old when I mentioned that I was implementing Fidelio as a PMS in some of the hotels, right? But if you if you take the progression of the of the industry and how tech has played a role, I think that um, Nikki mentioned about how Preservatron was implemented in, in the 40s to solve a reach and an efficiency issue, right? So if, if you think about how the things have been um, coming to pass is, first of all, the industry was trying to gain efficiency by the use of the technology, right? Um, 
then in when the GDSs appear, you're trying to solve a reach issue. In, in 1995, 1996, when um, Expedia and Booking.com appear or are founded, you're trying to solve a fragmentation issue. Um, then in the 2000s, TripAdvisor appears, more of a media company before and then what it's now today. And what you're trying to do is solve a consumer trust issue. Um, and in, in between, you have a lot of other changes. And then in 2007, which for me is kind of the latest uh, big disruption for travel is you have Airbnb up here and what you're trying to do is implement a different commercial model where it's like the shared economy paradigm being implemented in travel which before was very consolidated um, and we know what happened the last couple of years I think everyone is quite aware of it um, and that only showed that technology hadn't gotten up to the point where we were ready for the next big disruption of well, what could happen to travel and it's even sadder to see that even since we've gone out of COVID, there's not fundamental change that has happened. We, we haven't reached how or what we need to do. And I know that we're going to potentially touch base on, on new technology like chat GPT and everything and the rest of this discussion. So I think it will be good to see what we all see with this, this technology being applied for the industry. So that begs the question, is, is the industry ready to capitalize on looming travel boom? And, and I used the link and I'm happy to share it with the rest of the audience, but this is an article by McKinsey in 2021 that speaks of things that should be part of how we use travel tech and distribution in a different way to solve new consumer needs and nothing has been done about it, like literally nothing. So it's, it's quite interesting to see that people are focused on um, some of the issues with that. So take experiences, for example, where Hollywood works. So 40%, 48% of experience bookings happen when the traveler arrives. And the in destination experience today is not only very fragmented, it's very poor, has very slow response times. It leads to a lot of failures. Um, if you look at what they say is also that 70% of experiences still happen offline. Very different to potentially what... Uh, Nikki was mentioning about 70% of experiences happening off online for flights and hotels, right? So, and sometimes we take big numbers and, and like big assumptions on travel because those are the big products. And then you forget that travel is also about a lot of other things that are happening uh, around the consumer. And I think that uh, the, main, the main issues are some of the main legacy issues and tech debts for the industry and that are impacting distribution is first of all, new technology comes up. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the chat GPT reference, looks super cool, but it's solving a non-issue. Like consumers were not complaining, if you ask me, and this is potentially personal um, opinion, they were not complaining about their ability to make an itinerary. They could, they took time, but it's it was not something that out of the blue, 150 companies are hiring entire teams to develop a chat GPT plugin. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff to fix before that. Um, I think the other thing that you see after COVID is a lot of people trying to win back capacity and focusing on back to normal, but not thinking about the consumer experience of the future. Um, and also just, again, eliminate some tech debt. And then the biggest one I see, so again, Nikki uh, mentioned a couple of different businesses on that circular chart, is a lot of the legacy models for travel are unsustainable the cost of acquisition of the consumer is too high for you to scale and to grow. And, and if you look at the value chain in travel, the problem is that that cost is passed on. So at one point, like the end of that value chain before the consumer cannot absorb that cost and potentially they go out of business. So at Holibob, and this is a little bit about us and how we kind of see the, the things before is we're trying to fix a real consumer issue. And if you if you think how we are trying to do that is potentially with experiences and playing as an ecosystem with the other players in travel, is we wanna make sure that we can put the right product at the right time in the right place for the right person. And we can only do that if we're, if we're playing all together and we can leverage consumer data through AI um, to deliver personalized recommended uh, results for that consumer in destination when we're talking about uh, specific experiences so I would love to have better results on meta myself right so 
I think that I've 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 looked so many times in Meta that Meta already should know that I'm not taking flights on a Monday, that I don't need to tell Meta again that I'm doing that. Um, and then that's it about us. A little bit of fun facts about Holobot, um, leaving it for the audience here. Um, yeah, and it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Alejandro. Um, that's brilliant. I've got quite a few questions on that. I'm not sure whether I asked them now or whether I just park them and we come back to them. Um, Nikki, have you got anything you want to just throw in at this point? I do. And I think you're right, Andy. Let's take all the questions afterwards, because I think the, there's a couple of bits in here that will be touched on by others as well. Um, but thank you so much, Alejandro. That was super insightful. Yeah, no. Um, thank yes, you very much. There's a few, yeah, thank you very much, Alejandro. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a few things which I'd like to dive into, which a little bit off piece, shall we say, but um, I'm sure you'd be uh, capable enough to do with that. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, okay, let's move on. Um, let's go um, to the wonderful city of Sheffield in the north of England, uh, where resides John Harrison, who's regional director from um, Hotel Beds. Good morning, John. Um, I think most people I would imagine on this call probably know about, well, have heard of Hotel Beds, if not but maybe they don't know exactly what uh, you do and how you fit into the uh, ecosystem, if I can use that word. Uh, perhaps you could share your screen, John, and uh, tell us a little bit about your view on distribution. Absolutely, Andy. More than happy to do so. Um, and yeah, thanks for the invite today. And um, yeah, it's um, super interesting to be here. Um, uh, yeah, just to reintroduce myself uh, a little bit for the audience as well. Um, obviously, John, um, I'm from uh, Hotel Beds, um, and basically I, I head up the sourcing for um, Hotel Beds in the Benelux and Nordic countries. So um, again, what I can do for you today is to probably just guide you through a little bit of the Hotel Beds perspective on why travel tech matters and why it's kind of important for us and what we see it about. Um, but in terms of hotel beds, what I can share with you, many of the audience might know hotel beds, we're, we're quite a relevant player in the industry for many years. Um, we're essentially a company that's transformed significantly, I would say, over the past five years. I've been in the, in the business for 13 myself, but there's been a massive change and revolution in the business in the last five. Um, we started out as one of those wholesalers that Nikki mentioned earlier um, in terms of consolidating a large piece of the B2B market um, with three of the major players becoming one. Um, I think in more recent years, we've repositioned ourselves and transformed into what we would like to call a leading travel tech player which implies technology and providing um, various different solutions to the industry. Our role is, is simple um, and it's technology led. It is essentially there to connect this huge network and spiders web of partners through our technology. And basically our mission in itself is to connect and facilitate those um, connections through a variety of different bridges in that ecosystem or spiders web um, and to aim at creating a, a frictionless travel experience or as frictionless as we can hope for. Um, we work across many different um, streams, but essentially we, um, we take our core supply products from um, thousands of suppliers across the globe and distribute that to um, thousands of, of, of agency partners and travel bookers across the globe as well. Um, in terms of where we, we sit and, and our investment in, into tech, um, we've also been incredibly busy um, in the last few years. I would say that the, this journey started pre-COVID for hotel beds, um, as well as during and after. Um, we now sit within hotel beds as quite a vast organisation, but we're roughly handling 4 billion searches from our partners on a daily basis, which equates to 50, 55,000 requests per system per, per second into our system. Um, it's an incredible number. If you think of Google handling 9 billion searches a day, uh, little old hotel beds with 4 billion um, ain't bad going. But essentially as well, um, where we sit in the center of this ecosystem, we have access in, to a, an incredible uh, sort of um, uh, amount of data, which is again, a, a sort of very powerful in this day and age when we talk about um, the sort of travel distribution. And um, in terms of um, that, that data that we hold, it's coming from 195 different countries around the world as well. So it gives us quite a broad reference point when we, we talk about how to drive forward and, and support our partners on a global basis. 
Um, tech's super important when we sit in the middle of this, this spider's web. Um, accuracy is key um, and technology is super important. So um, we're proud to say that 91% of our sort of searches that we handle um, are, are actually um, accurate and, and sort of not falling over as it were. But essentially there's a real big investment in that from a hotel beds perspective to ensure that those bridges that we provide are indeed sort of um, bridges that sort of stay stable and accurate. Um, a little visual to, to show you where we sit in that ecosystem as well is we really sit in the center of that world and um, on the left hand side you've got a number of different supply partners that we might work with and on the right hand side a number of different travel distributors so again remembering Nikki's lovely visual I, I love that visual by the way Nikki really incredible in terms of understanding the market but essentially where we sit is is in the middle of, of the supply side and the distribution side um, from the tour operation airline and um, OTA uh, sphere as well um, we have thousands of connections, um, integrations that exist from the old ones of the days of the GDS that are still out there in the key now, um, and uh, various different variety of connectivities, channel managers, API interfaces, you name it. And every connectivity is unique to itself. So there might be various different forms of connectivity, but every connection is built differently between every different company. So it's super complex. Um, Bit confusing sometimes. I'm a commercial guy, so I don't understand always the the tech. Andy, I'm right there with you on that on that side. Um, but it, essentially, um, you know what we're aiming to be is something that um, sort of delivers that sort of seamless experience throughout. And more and more, Alejandro completely agree. Every individual consumer, the industry is getting more and more personalised towards that booking behaviour across the board, which means that every connectivity that we hold has to sort of develop into, into this world where we're able to facilitate and, and service that demand of that individual traveller, even with the vast technology that we have in between. Um, in terms of travel tech today, travel tech is a very fancy word, I think, but at the end of the day, travel tech, um, I don't think travel is the most advanced from a technology perspective, even though we come a long way. Um, some key trends since COVID that we've seen big shifts and continued shift is um, faster evolution in technology, still many antiquated systems out there. A big change in customer behavior, and that's driving the changes both in the technological sphere and, and, and around it as well. And then a real need to, to increase efficiency. So that's one key sort of area that our customers, our clients, etc., really zero in on and um, post-COVID environment, the need for efficiency, the need for fast systems that are, let's say, stable and supporting a more seamless booking experience. Just some anecdotal information, you know, some again stats. Um, I, stats are good now. Um, hotel partners, um, we see a lot of our independent hotel partners having surveyed them that the increase of chatbot usage has been massive in, in 2022. So 50, they've increased the usage by more than 53% in terms of utilising chatbot, not just to service customer inquiries and, and, and operational issues, but also as a method of upselling, the, let's say, different ancillaries and products within in-house to a hotel. So again, independent partners are really hot on that. Chains are a little bit slower off the mark in that sense, but then they're working with significantly more sort of um, robust and, and larger systems there behind. Many of our partners still use, and many of the industry still use, really antiquated systems, legacy systems that have agreed, existed for years and years and years, huge technical debt that Alejandro, you mentioned earlier. Um, we see that really sort of from, from the small things. Faxes, we turned off six months ago in hotel beds. So imagine that hotels were, were still receiving faxes and working with the pieces of paper. Okay, um, some things for the future. Um, what we es estimate is that over half of our tour operator and travel, tour operator and travel agency partners will be moving to, forward to cloud-based technology within the next five years. That means the whole shift of their, their, their company into the cloud. Um, 82%, um, Alejandro, you touched on it in terms of AI, 82% of airlines are reporting that they will be shifting towards using some way, shape or form of artif artificial intelligence again in the next three years. So again, big trends on the horizon. And this is kind of sort of where we, we, we sort of looking towards the future. Three main trends that I'd highlight. 
from a hotel beds perspective, where we see the industry going, is artificial intelligence, the gathering pace behind that when it's used in a safe, cautionary and the right way, Alejandro, for sure. Um, augmented reality, using AR to leverage and, and give a customer a much more personalized experience around how to book the product and, and in the aspirational sense, and then drive them towards booking it. And then that enhanced need for, for a, an enhanced customer journey and again, using tools like fintech and, and technology around that to really support and leverage that through. Um, and again, 1983 internet being born, some key dates there from travel agents, tour operators and the big OTA starting to boom. One piece of um, sort of, um, you know, um, thought from our side is that, listen, within the next three to five years, we should expect great leaps forward. And I think that generally speaking, there could be a change in the general status quo of how a travel trip could be booked or arranged. Maybe not going to the extreme, as you mentioned, Alejandro, with the immediate move towards, um, let's say, booking through chat GPT technology in an instant. But I think that the generation of tomorrow are not gonna spend hours and hours researching their holidays. They're gonna want it in an instant. They're gonna want something immersive. And obviously from that, we need to have the technology to support that. And the last thing from my side is in the sense of collaboration. We'll move forward with technology. We want to be at the forefront of it with um, colleagues like yourselves. But at the end of the day, we all need to move together because technology will only be move as fast as we will move together. And that's it from my side. John, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> wow, there's a lot to discuss there. Um, again, I've got lots of questions. Um, Nikki, I'm sure you have as well. Um, I'd just like to mention collaboration because that's a quite an interesting thing. I'll just pick this up while we're here because um, it's one of the things I scribbled down on, on the paper on the handle when you were talking um, about you've got all these incredible companies and the, you've got all of these um, different players within, within, within this web as we've discussed and surely one of the ways forward is in the way companies should be looking to collaborate with other companies in order to make that easier or to make that, that that is that something that you're actively looking at john just just while we're here on that subject just taking myself back on me i'm off mute yeah i mean this is something that we're actively looking at in hotel beds we've just come off of a series of events in the last few months and um, called our market hubs where we're bringing industry players together it is something that's very sort of hot on the agenda for us is to to bring all spheres together under the same roof to solve the the challenges of the future alejandro you mentioned a few of those and i think it's it's critical that that all all gather from across the industry um, work together and collaborate. At the end of the day, there's two parts to this. There's the tech part and the AI world and things like that, but it's not going to go anywhere without human interaction. Another part of that that we've, we've invested in hotel beds more than recently is partnering with companies from outside our industry. We've launched a travel tech hub in February um, together with our partners from Waira. Um, we're part of the Telefonica group and we're actually bringing entrepreneurs from outside of the industry to help us solve the problems of, of the current and develop towards the future. And again, that sort of whole piece of bringing together different players from different parts of the industry as well, super critical. We can only solve the problem from our perspective if we only look from our perspective. But if we bring in different influences from the hotel side, from the transfer and activity side, from the, you know, um, the experts across the industry and so many travel companies, then we stand the best chance of driving forward the technology in a really uh, an overall way. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Something that we, uh, my, my colleague Paul and myself, we, we, we spend a lot of time talking about collaboration and it was interesting how that, Alejandro, I'll give you a shot, your, 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 your five minutes of fame in a second, come back to you. But I, I need to bring in Anna, so, who's been waiting very patiently for us uh, in the background. So my apologies for keeping you waiting. So Anna is Chief Distribution Officer of Roybos. Um, and I'd just like to invite Anna to, to tell us a little bit about Roybos, a little bit about your, your role, what, what your, your organization does. And you know, how you fit into this, this incredibly complicated network at the same time. So Anna, over to you, please. Hi, morning, everyone. Thank you for, for inviting to this uh, very interesting webinar. Um, for those that uh, don't know me, I've been in the distribution online for more than 20 years. 13 of those, John, I was at uh, Hotel Vets. So 
but selling site, not sourcing. Um, then I went to start another uh, bed bank from scratch, Yalago from the Danata group. And then I moved to tech, pure tech, travel gate, tech platform in the distribution um, and in accommodation. And recently I moved to Droibos. Why? Um, Droibos to me is a, is the new uh, distribution solution coming coming to stay in in the online B two B world. Um, as Nikki explained very very well, uh, what was initially the role of the wholesalers, connecting the suppliers, the hotels, and the accommodation to to B two Cs and and to OTAs. Uh, the main role was wholesalers, and nowadays there's more uh, players coming in. So Roibos is a marketplace, and if you want, I'll share with you um, a little bit more in detail about uh, Roibos. Yeah, go for it. Can, can you see my presentation? Sorry, because I only have one screen, so I lost you completely. <clears throat> we can see you, but we can't see your presentation, Anna, I'm afraid. Okay, um, ah, yeah, let me share, uh, sorry, let me share with you. Yeah. Let uh, me know. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Yeah? yeah all good. Okay. So um, Droibos, as, as, as Nick explained very, very well, is uh, disrupting the distribution model in the B2B. Um, as you know, um, the distribution chain has been up till now very long and hoteliers with the internet and, and with technology, uh, with wholesalers and intermediary uh, lost a little bit what they always dreamt of, uh, controlling the distribution of, of their products. Um, there's like a black hole when, when wholesalers and intermediaries come in and, and hoteliers see with surprise their products uh, showing in OTAs that they were not even aware of and sometimes disrupting uh, the rates they agreed. Uh, with the intermediaries. So Roibos uh, is, is a marketplace that enables uh, hotels uh, to distribute directly to, to B2B players. So this black hole, we are trying to be transparent. We are trying to uh, explain and facilitate the connectivity with um, B2B players. Um, there's a short video here just explaining um, how we, we enhance the distribution, but I think it's uh, maybe better if I explain to you our USPs. What, what Droibos does is, uh, thanks to new technology, to uh, facilitate this uh, connectivity uh, of all channel managers or even hotels that have no uh, online solutions, no distribution uh, technology to load into our system and distribute directly to, to the B2Bs. Uh, why is it different? Why is it disrupting? Because it's direct hotel rates with no markup and we facilitate a direct access to, to the hotels and the clients. Um, it's a way to enhance the um, direct contracting. Um, hoteliers can start to distribute their products to new players they were not even aware and, and the most important thing there's no need to sign any agreements Roibos provide a framework agreement uh, where clients and hotels can agree on different rates and it changes the rates through our technology in our marketplace and there's no need of signing a, agreements back and, and, and forward. So um, this is it uh, very quickly, uh, what we are and what we do. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> that's interesting and I've written something in my book um, which I will elaborate on in a second. Uh, so thank you for that, Anna. Uh, that's it. It's 
sparked a thought in my head about, about a direction we could take this conversation. Uh, but Nikki, I've got lots of questions here. Maybe uh, you want to kick off with a couple to start with. Um, where do you want to start? Yeah. No problem. OK, so I've got a couple of things that kind of stand out for all of you. So I'll start with Alejandro, if that's OK. Alejandro, you mentioned um, kind of whether we're on, whether we're ready for the next change in the travel industry. I personally think we are. And I think what might be worth mentioning at this stage is obviously during the pandemic, we've also had a massive shift in generations. And we are now looking at facilitating the travel booking journey for native digital or digital natives worldwide. So kind of the millennial and the Gen Z shift, I think, has a lot to play in the way that distribution technology is evolving. And I think for Holly Bob, this is very relevant, particularly on the personalization piece and on the expectation of digital natives to be able to book an experience fluidly online. And I think this is very much a horizon that where you sit um, in kind of the driving seat of what's next. Um, so would you like to kind of elaborate a little bit more on personalization technology for us? Well, yes, and thank you for the question. I think that first of all, you need to think about the generational shift after COVID, right? And also the reasons for travel have changed. So if you look at this digital natives, 60% of them are doing search and inspiration through TikTok. So they don't use traditional channels anymore. And I, dare I say that 80% of the industry doesn't have TikTok presence. Um, forget about seamless digital booking flow for that consumer that doesn't exist today. Um, and, and I think it's because it goes back to the, to the question, are we ready? I think from a tech perspective, you are ready. Um, and we can do a lot about personalization because we can leverage the data. The problem is the business and the use of that data that's happening, potential personalization um, implementation in industry. So I think that, but it, it's not related to the tech. Again, the tech is there for you to consume that data and in a safe way, because people always go back with the easy answer, which is, oh no, GDPR won't allow me to do that. And technically, if you think it, of it from a consumer perspective, the consumer is already giving you consent to use that data, right? And they can opt out and everything else. I think the biggest problem here is that how our businesses have been built, and I've talked about our, like generic, uh, more generalistically, is that you need to be obsessed about owning the consumer. And that's, that's a big shift after COVID because I think companies need to start realizing that they never own the consumer not even if they're paying 40 bucks for them on, on Google. Uh, and basically, I think that we are now testing actively with people once we can leverage data coming out of PMSs or even GDS, uh, because we work with the GDS, we work with hotels, we work with airlines, uh, very efficiently deliver personalized things to do to the consumer every single time. So it's not about just giving a mass recommendation for a destination that shortens like what's already available in OTA and make it a little bit nicer. No, we are talking about giving personalized result, results, generally between leveraging the data and passing it through a recommendation engine that we built internally um, to the consumer every single time. So, so that can be done. Can it be scaled? Potentially will take time, right? Because again, the, the engine needs to learn. And, and I think that's a very good learning. And I, I think John mentioned it before, it's like, this whole chat GPT crazy for personalization doesn't make any sense because first of all, you're putting data there that then open AI keeps. And then the personalization onward gets hampered, right? Because you're gonna still use it to produce other things. And at this very moment, AI is giving you a 50-50 response. Um, did I answer your question? Yeah, I think it's going into AI now, which is another area of great interest, I think, for all of us. Um, but I think um, personalization technology and kind of the idea that you can have a booking journey, um, that is also an experience online in itself. To buy an experience that you then have in destination is something worth highlighting. And I think it's um, you're very much at the forefront of that. So thank you. Well, good. Andy, do you have any questions in between? Um, well, yeah, I've got lots of questions. Um, I think <clears throat> I just find it anecdotally, I find it very interesting that um, 
uh, we're talking about this personalization and the, this drive to, to, to the high tech spec uh, travel travel options where um, recently flying through Finland, I had to enter my passport details and my date of birth 27 times into the same airline app because he couldn't remember who I was, which I found particularly irritating. So there's a bit of a sort of, <clears throat> there's a sort of, it doesn't quite fit sometimes, you know, you, 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 we get very excited about how great uh, technology is and sometimes the very basic things don't work. I would also sort of take issue on um, solving non-issues, uh, Alexander. I think, you know, solving an on, and that's why they invented the motor car. You know, if people, you ask people what they wanted in 1843, they would have said, I wanted a faster horse. Um, and then they sort of come along and they invent a car. So AI came along. I, I accept completely that it's not the sort of the big the massive disruptor that lots of the media particularly seem to claim it to be. But it is something we should talk about, Nikki, I guess. And it's something that because it does, it's already part of our life. It's already part of what we do. We don't know it. Um, but it is largely a lot of the decisions we make, a lot of the, every time you, you, you know, you apply for a mortgage or you go to a bank, you, you, you end up sort of being enmeshed in AI technology. Um, who wants to pick this up? Um, Anna, do you want to say anything about AI? Are you happy to? Yes, um, I consider, or, or my, my children are teenagers, I consider me very offline, but for the first time for this summer, I did my itinerary for the holidays with ChatGPT, and oh. it turned out excellent. So I'm very surprised. Uh, it's, it's, it's private, but I wanted to share that, um, and I think I share with Paul, Yesterday, uh, I really consider that for B2Cs or for the OTAs, uh, going back to Nikki um, brings, when it comes to, to and as Alejandro said, to, to customer experience, uh, I think it will really help to build itineraries, packages, and take decisions where they want to go and visit. Um, I really consider not the B2B, Distribution, I don't see this yet into the B2B distribution, but yes, in the B2C, uh, I think it's it's already here. I see AI as being very much, I mean, I, it, it seems to me there's technology has been very good at aggregating. So you've got all this stuff out there and technology aggregates all the information and then makes it available to the consumer. So it's very much an aggregator. And then at the same time, You've got a personalization drive going on, which is actually then splitting everything up. Um, so it seems to me that it, it, there's a sort of mis mis mismatch somehow in terms of the technology that we have and we've been driving towards is aggregating all these different products and putting them onto one thing. And at the same time, now what we need to do is then split them all up again and actually deliver them individually to the individual people. Is, I mean, is that a fair point, Nikki? Is, or is that <clears throat> a simplistic way of looking at it? Yeah, I think it's like kind of with. In a way, we still need to collect absolutely everything because we need to be able to build the technology to suit the masses. But what we're looking to now do is spit out an option that is personalized for the customer itself. And I think it's quite interesting what you say, Anna, that the B2B segment's not quite there. Because my question to you was actually, how do we start to personalize for groups? How do we start to personalize for mice that has this yet emerged? as an industry that we're looking at, or is it very much still the individual consumer on the B2C segment? Oh. It's very much offline. Uh, I think we have been trying since my times at Hotel Beds. I'm talking about 15 years ago, trying to put into the online world, the mice and the groups. Quotations are very much of, still offline. And, and it's a very uh, offline world. Uh, I don't know, John, you can correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not uh, being managing mice and groups for, for a long time now, but it's very, very difficult to, to put this into the tech. Yeah. So we're yeah, in like I mean, that hybrid world still, hey? Yeah, yeah, Nikki, um, Anna, yeah, we, we're obviously, Anna knows the background of hotel beds and, and groups. Uh, obviously, we're, we're sort of on the agenda at the various different points in time. I think groups is a, a challenging environment, obviously, to, to bring into the online world. But again, just to sort of go back to the point, I think it's it's the this huge piece of data data can always drive us towards making the right technology choices and solving the right problems right so if we have the data and understand the clients 
then from that perspective, we can uh, sort of drive and, and personalize the products from there. So aside of the GDRP piece, you know, if we've got the right level of data, again, sitting with organizations around the industry, et cetera, then we can start to personalize that right versus the demand that we have. Whether it's offline group product, whether it's mice, whether it's individual traveler, it's, it's using that data and harnessing it in the right way and to then utilize the appropriate level or, or, or direction with the technology, whether that's AI, whether that's AR, whether that's um, you know finance, FinTech, et cetera, but it's utilizing that knowledge in the data. And again, back to your point, Andy, is not to be scared of the data, using that data then to sort of, um, sort of get to that point of personalization. There's a huge amount of data out there. That's incredible. But obviously, you need to be able to have the, the right, right method to sort of dissect that and then take that through to that personalized level and stay. So again, maybe we'll get there with one day with groups, Nikki. I'm not sure just yet, but I'm sure that there's a pathway if we can solve the problem with the right tools and the right data. Also, Nikki, I think the issue is here that the supplier, the hoteliers, they still provide uh, of uh, groups and, and mice only offline those rates are, are not distributed through channel managers and through the online distribution. Uh, those rates are only provided uh, offline. So we need them to start uh, you know, the wheel and then we will be able to distribute them online, but th those rates are not even online yet. Fair point. That's a fair point. No, I've got a uh, I've got a very good friend of mine who runs a DMC in um, in the Nordics who is driven mad by um, group requests um, and he probably his his materialization rate is about ten percent or thereabouts because he gets so much rubbish um, but he has to do he has to do every one individually privately and manually and it's just it's just it's just and that's not an uncommon thing it's it's prevalent around the world for the for the DMC network. So to introduce some sort of technology into that to alleviate that issue would be certainly a step in the right direction. Um, what was I going to say? One other thing was about, um, go on, Nikki, you pick me up. I'll, it'll come back to me in a second. Okay. So I had um, one last piece, and this is really for all of you, but I might want to start with John on this. So John, you mentioned kind of more about the technology that sits under the hood of all of us distributors. Um, and the need to have a frictionless travel experience online yeah. during that booking journey and to also be streamlined as an organization to make sure that your integrations and connections to other companies are working well. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned also that you're starting to see a trend in more and more cloud based technology and the need for cloud based technology worldwide. Um, so I guess kind of this is a cheeky question, but is this the start to the end of the legacy system? Perhaps? Well, it is in hotel beds. Um, so legacy systems, you know, the past couple of years, um, it's been a, a huge investment in hotel beds, more so than any other area of our business. Technology and, and the whole overhaul of core operating systems have been the heart of everything we've done to take us from a place where we're obviously handling four billion searches, a, 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 obviously a day through to obviously um, the, the, the next the next level. So I think that from that perspective, I would expect many um, organisations to be moving towards towards um, more future-based technology going into the cloud, overhauling legacy systems, um, and, and again, moving away from more antiquated um, technologies. And that's really gonna open up um, the universe of, of this personalized stay and the connected trip. And that's the direction of travel for the consumer. I think that that's the, the bottom line for it all, Nikki. The end consumer is, is the one that's gonna design how we look as an industry. And we need to develop our technology and embrace the new technology that comes along to work with that. Fantastic. Is that what everybody else is seeing as well, Alejandro? Yes, I completely agree. I think, um, I mean, you, you, can, you can piggyback to basically, again, this, this, this whole thing about the technology just not getting there and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because I, I think Andy picked it up before us. I think we're focusing on the wrong issues, to be honest, as a collective. Uh, and the biggest one is not putting the consumer in, at the forefront of everything we do. Gotcha. Yeah. Very good. 
And Anna? It's kind yes, of the way to um, go. Yeah, more or less the, the same. Uh, I still think that uh, B2B distribution, you know, is, is the chain. So the, at, at the end, final client is the one that uh, is choosing now how to travel and post pandemic, as Alejandro said before, what they want to do, how they want to do, and more and more thanks to, to technology, the super apps and everything they have access uh, to book directly. Uh, so B2B distribution needs to really add value if, uh, if we really want to adapt to their needs. I mean, not only that, Nikki, if, like if, if you allow me. So Anna mentioned something earlier that was interesting. So she said that she used ChatGPT to plan her own vacation. If you go to research, I think no consumer in the history of travel has said, I want to take vacation to plan for something that I don't want to plan, right? So I'm planning for something that I want to get away from in my day-to-day -day life. So that, that is quite interesting. And now we're trying to put all this effort. And again, thinking about B2B or B2B2C, for me, actually, like AI or ChatGPT made um, available to the consumer, it's a, it's a mistake because technically it's a B2B2C tool. Technically, so the consumer wants to be there giving a result produced by AI. He doesn't want to do that himself. Like if we ask travelers today, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't presume that people are just downloading plugins every single day to produce their own. I think at the end of the day, we also have this tendency of us saying what a great idea this is because it solves my business need. Really, so we are travel people, so sometimes we are biased to say that this is a great idea because we see the immediate effect for us, but we fail to see the immediate effect for the consumer. That's so true. Very good. I'm I'm conscious that it's uh, four minutes to, to ten here in London. Um, what's um I think what we need to just go around the table uh, as a final wrap up. I just like before we do that because we might run out of time. Thank everyone. Thank you to Anna. Thank you to Alejandro. Thank you to John, and especially thank you to Nikki. Oh yeah, and for, forgot Paul behind the scenes who's running the whole, the whole, uh, the whole show. So thank you for Paul for the techie support. Um, just like to sort of thank everyone for taking part. It's been it's been super interesting. Um, what's I mean, if, if we got lots of people here who are perhaps not technically minded who are watching or will be watching the recording. Uh, in just a couple of words, you know, what should they look out for in the next couple of years? What, how, in, in terms of the business, how should they take their business and say, right, I need to focus on this going forward? Is there any particular words of advice? Uh, Alejandro, you're not in, so I'm going to start with you for no particular reason. Uh, what, what would you, what would you su suggest? I mean, I always, I think I use four words all the time. So it's consumer, it's ecosystem, it's convenience and curation. If you focus on those, then you're done. I think going forward, it's and, and even COVID has accelerated this. You need to focus on what the consumer really wants. It's difficult. Out of that, you need to create an ecosystem behind you that allows you to play with different travel actors, let's call it, or agents that allow you to get through to that consumer, have meaningful local impact, right? So you make it hyper local and that you're solving convenience and curation. So people want to find things fast that are relevant to them, not relevant to the larger travelers in the world. So if you're not working towards that, uh, yeah, I'm afraid you're you're the way of the dodo, basically. Excellent. That was a long four words, but thank you anyway. Um, Anna, um, what, any advice you'd like to give our watchers as to uh, maybe where they should be focusing their attentions in the in the next few years? Technology, obviously. I, I still see clients coming in forced because hotels don't give any more static rates and they need to go to the online world forced by the suppliers and it's amazing um connectivity is key everyone needs to go online because otherwise it's very difficult to survive in in the travel industry and another thing alejandro mentioned very very important is cooperation between different techs um some are specialists in in marketplace some in in the mapping some in the so we need to all cooperate to to do this uh distribution very seamless very easy Thank you, Anna. And John, any words? Well, I think there's been some decent ones covered there already. I think, um, listen, um, don't have fear. Um, embrace embrace what's to come. Um, put the focus on the customer at the heart and centre of everything that we do. Um, even in the B2B sphere, we're very focused on that. Um, collaborate. Um, collaborate. 
Um, certainly yeah. we all work in the same ecosystem so it's important that whether we are on one side or the other or, or part of, we're all part of the same mechanism the same industry and we have to work together to, to drive things forward and um, continue to work that because then we'll personalize that guests and that end consumers trip um, and make holiday experiences really really special okay. and nikki final word to you uh, and then we're going to have to go Fabulous. This was super cool. Um, well, I think increased collaboration is the name of the day. Um, so I think that's going to be something to look out for. I think new technologies are coming into distribution tech now. So watch out for those cloud based techs. And I think personalized distribution will become something. So do I. Thank you. Listen, everyone, it's been a fantastic session. Really enjoyed it. Thank you again to Anna, to Alandra, to John, especially to Nikki and Paul and Paul, Paul behind the scenes. Thank you very much. And we'll see you all in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Thank okay. you, everyone. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.